uh, uh, dear viewers and uh, good evening and uh, good afternoon those are watching from the uk and good evening uh, those are watching bangladesh and uh, thank you all of you have been waiting long time to uh, ask so many questions about ielts about the ielts preparations about the covid 19 and and so on so let's introduce myself my name is gola mortram one of the director of ah and z associates and today in our uh, live show we brought one of the two key figure in bangladesh and ial sector especially and uh, i have uh, invited uh, one of the uh, uh, key uh, partner uh, british council mrs sarwat masood reja uh, who is uh, working as a head of business development exams british council bangladesh and a quick introduction about uh, mrs sarwat reja i talk about her quite details uh, hours of time she has been working over 13 years in the british council and working in all the senior management positions and uh, in uh, personally she has completed her degree from the uk she has studied in ms in fashion studies lovro university uk at the same time she also completed the postgraduate certificate course in managing open learning language from the university of hull she has also completed a professional certification of marketing from chartered institute of marketing uk and obviously uh, she is also studied a master degree from the dhaka university my university as well and thank you uh, we all passed 100 years of uh, dhaka university uh, century is already appeared i think as, uh, yesterday uh, dhaka university has completed 100 years of their uh, in their life and at the same time we have the other expertise who has been working long time in the british council uh, from uh, back 2014 and working as an ielts expert we brought our today's session to all of you and welcome to our evening session uh, ms ashikur rahman and mrs uh, sarwat masood reja welcome both of you thank you very much for inviting us uh, yes uh, ashikur rahman can you hear us Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And uh, viewers, uh, a quick introduction about AHZ Associates. Uh, as, uh, we have been uh, operating over the nine years of time uh, in different countries, having the 25 brands around the world at the moment, and having uh, three active presence in Bangladesh and three branches. We recruit large number of international students, especially for the UK. And uh, at the same time, most of our colleagues studied at the UK University as well. In terms of the visas, we got around over 98% success uh, in Australia for Bangladesh as well. And at the same time, the British Council and the IELTS, we have a very closing uh, relations. We have been because one of the key part when you plan to study at the UK University, you are required to study, uh, you are required to have the IELTS score, and uh, which is very common uh, for all of us, those who are planning to study abroad. In fact, uh, even uh, to, to do the settlements or any other category, if you're planning to start uh, come in the UK, you are required to have also the level of B1, B2, or different criteria as well. We're going to come back all of these explanation how it's going to work, and uh, those who need uh, IELTS preparation and what are the levels as well. And uh, but it is also important to know because the most of the viewers has been long time waiting uh, because. Uh, the COVID-19 is the most of the critical part at the moment. The world pandemic situation is uh, we are facing here in the UK and uh, over there in Bangladesh as well. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Mrs. Sarwat Masudreja that every year compared to the last year, because the large number of students uh, see the basic, very peak time supposed to be this is the time and uh, students coming to for the aisles and don't have the booking even uh, to sit for this but how you uh, what is your mind this time and because you can't take any uh, test uh, for a while and what is the options you thinking for the students yeah this is very unfortunate or uh, we cannot really change the situation actually the it have it started happening uh, in china and china is our largest ilts market so we had to close down all the ILTS operation in China uh, actually from January. So from that time, we also we started uh, getting the heat uh, because uh, this is our largest business uh, in that part of the world. We couldn't really uh, uh, do any IELTS uh, testing 
and gradually in uh, this part of the world and other part of the world ielts has been postponed all the exams now uh, because of the covid situation it's not true that bangladesh only affected the whole uh, world is affected so the students who wants to go abroad um, they understand that why you are not taking uh, the running the test so they are also waiting on the top of that what we are doing we are helping them uh, so that they can get ready for better score in, in many cases, the students they do have um they just uh, register and they sit for the test and it's an expensive one. so what we are um, suggest this moment uh, because uk university and other universities are also taking time for this uh, uh, upcoming session so they are giving some extra time so why don't you take extra time and use the use it best so we are supporting the students in every way uh for uh, getting ready for the test if they have any question where you bring it up ashik bhai putting a like the uh, ints expert we are running uh, regular online sessions for our regular candidates uh, registered candidates and for other potential one uh, connecting with them with other countries activities so this way we are actually managing the whole thing rather than like discussing to um uh, because we cannot really change anything at this moment so whatever we need to do we need to do within this situation yes and uh, thank you very much uh, uh, because uh, i believe as you said currently there quite peak time in bangladesh and uh, that is why you are continuously monitoring the situation what can i have done and the good thing is because the uk universities are very optimistic at the moment and they are planning to uh, move anyhow the september semester they might slowly uh, delaying the uh, late joining up to october and at the moment also planning to do the blended learning so we have a some sort of uh, sufficient time i would say at the moment but one of the tests if you uh, as we know like in ielts there are four categories you are monitoring the uh, like i think b1 b2 c1 c2 and uh, if you classify and also due to the uh, large number of students cannot sit for the ielts uh, uh, going coming to the center you have the alternative test system at the moment in place which is called ielts indicator and mm -hmm. uh, would you mind to explain how it works for the student those are planning to sit for this and how it will com how you will compare with the session they are coming for the actual test ielts indicator is in solution actually it's not a permanent solution because uh, the way i indicated test is been taken uh, gradually the universities are giving the um, uh, acceptance for taking the test it's not that all universities are accept accepting it but uh, gradually the number is growing uh, i indicate actually from british council we haven't really got any uh, country wise um uh, activities for promoting ielts indicator uh, as we are planning to start testing um, in la from uh, our approval so we are uh, trying to give the option if you need to take the test now and if ielts indicator is the option you can go for ielts indicator actually that test can be taken from their home if they have the right uh, type of uh, uh, laptop internet connection and this kind of thing and um, in cases paying for it is also difficult because uh, they it's going direct out out of uh, the bangladesh so it's it cannot be given like uh, the other way like uh, they to give the money to british council in different ways either cash or uh, online payment or through the wallet but they can do that it's only one way to send the money to outside bank in many cases the students own may not be able to do that so there are some limitations but uh, as i already mentioned this is the interim solution somebody is uh, has the chance to do it now they can go for it yes and uh, so uh, the uh, ielts indicator is uh, how long it takes 3 hours so how long is the session is normally 
it's the same it's the same uh, i need to uh, take the um, uh, test their own actually it's a it's a proctored system unlike uh, through uh, artificial intelligence uh, ashik bhai do you want to add anything okay yes <clears throat> it's the same test but it is as the name suggests you see it indicates that that might be your score like as you are taking it from home there is no invisilation so that's why it is not given the ielts status however it has the candidates before taking this test must make sure there that, that the university they are applying for accept it it has to be accepted by the universities and many universities are accepting it so you guys know it better uh, and yeah. the universities may ask you to take the main test later after getting enrolled and that there is no basic difference it's the same test the only difference is you take it from home and it is a interim solution it's not an it will not be certified it not be given a hard copy of certificate one more information i would like to add for everybody if you go to um, take ielts.org it is a british council ielts site there is everything written about ielts indicator in detail i repeat okay. take ielts.org okay and uh, thank you uh, ashik bhai uh, covering these more details uh, viewers i know that you have a lots of multiple questions about ielts and about the possibility of studying uh, in the uk or the future of after completing the study as well so the uh, session out of the ielts i'll be covering later of the our today session and the way you keep uh, updating the all the questions all the questions will go ahead one by one and will also uh, myself for our uh, guest will also answer all of the questions we'll try to answer all the relevant questions as well and so i would recommend you to uh, stay with us and listen to us as well um, from the our uh, or the guest as well okay and uh, as you uh, uh, one of the important thing that uh, our new plan viewers uh, study at the uk university you are required to have the uh, of, of course the level of english b2 level and you plan to study a bachelor degree or a master degree as well or if you planning to study a foundation program um, you require to have a b1 level of english as well which is uh, i think is uh, b1 is categorized as a 5.5 sorry 5 uh, below 5.5 i mean is a, a category basically and from i think b2 is uh, i think the is from 5.5 to 6.5 am i right Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. So this is what is uh, requirements as well. And English is the uh, set uh, the requirement set by the UKBI to uh, assess the students by the university. So once you apply for the visa uh, for the IELTS or IELTS indicator uh, it will not actually impact on your visa whatever test you are taking because the university uh the in their cash letter they will write down how they assess you for the particular program uh, they offer you so uh, once you go apply for the point based system uh, if you have a cash letter uh, which is a sponsor letter from the university that is a 30 points if you have the bank statements or maintenance funds that is a 10 points so you have a 40 points and you should be eligible uh to get the visa i mean uh following the checks by the in ukbi as i said uh, it is a uh, requirements by the university and university if they accept with the ielts indicator or if they accept even ukbi ielts or non ukbi ielts that's also the university that requirements how they will justify you profile and if i would like to on i said the ukbi and non ukbi is actually my uh, curiosity as well because we can only can differentiate between the uh, these two tests on the have the ukbi uh, reference number but how it is internally impact or how it is actually you categorize in terms of the quality and control things uh, mrs sarot please yeah uh, for ukbi and um please uh, correct me if i'm wrong you are asking the question about the ukbi uh, ielts and non ukbi and how you maintain regular the quality and what is the difference yes. you found actually, the test is same 
Okay. You are going to get ready for the test, whether you sit for UKBI or regular IELTS. That is what you said, non-UKBI. It's the same test. Take two round, there's no difference. Only two differences. One is how we are administering the test. Um, for UKBI, in uh, some universities, not really 100% with the way the uh, regular ILTS has been administered by anybody, either British Council or anybody. So they wanted to have some extra checkpoints. For example, a few more cameras, um, a different kind of um, certificates, uh, format is different. Uh, then uh, how we are actually managing for taking the test, test delivery. That's the difference actually happening. Uh, for uh, a customer point of view, when they want to get ready for the test, uh, it's the same. Only the difference comes uh, from their point of view is uh, the fee. The fee is slightly higher than regular IELTS because that it's more administrative heavy. Uh, we have to put a lot of extra effort to take the VI IELTS. Uh, but if somebody wants to take ILTS, that person needs to check with the university first that which ILTS they need to take. Uh, if there is any requirement for UK ILTS, uh, UK VI ILTS, it's not really, uh, we are not going to say that they, that person will take the regular ILTS, but if the university doesn't really, they're not bothered about which ILTS, I think UK VI will also work. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, may, I uh, or yes. may I clarify a bit? If you permit yeah. yes um, I, I would say as a teacher I would say if you are an IELTS candidate you think that there is no difference because it will not impact you as a candidate you just prepare for normal IELTS because it's just a center specialty as you would like to go to UK you will have to take IELTS in a particular center where administration is different where video cameras are there but that will, will not impact you as a student or as an as a um, candidate of IELTS test, uh, that's what I wanted to say. So you don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, like, mm -hmm. you know, an IELTS, suppose IELTS UQVI is going on, on the same day, at the same time, normal IELTS is also going on with the same questions, same questions, only center of speciality, where you are sitting, that's it. Thank right. you. Right. And thank you. Uh, it's actually quite informative. And uh, uh, for, for uh, customer point of view or for the student point of view, it will not impact their marks or anything. It's all uh, UKBI, yeah. the uh, UK uh, Border Immigration wanted to um, uh, see that the proper I mean, the quality control being maintained internally when they're taking the test was taken. I think that's the only the thing. And the most of the university, and uh, uh, you'll be happy to know that most of the university uh, when the student got directly B2 level of uh, English, I mean, the, no, none of the band is below 5.5. They And if the non uh, uh is also standard, I mean, according to their uh, anti requirements, say if a student required to have IELTS 6, no less than 5.5, most of the university accept uh, without any uh, uh, categorization or classification, either UK or non UKBI. Only if it is the UKBI IELTS, they will put the reference of the UKBI reference number in their cast letter. Apart from this, actually, uh, they will both will be, uh, I mean, the, uh, agreed or accepted by the university. But if you, any student, uh, it is uh, just to, for the, uh, the viewers, if any student, if you plan to uh, come to the uh, university, uh, university here for the admission, and if you are not confident enough that you I also will not be up to the university's anti requirements. In this case, uh, we would recommend you to go for the UKB IELTS because if you even get any uh, any of the particulars, uh, I mean the uh, subject area, either writing, reading, speaking, or listening, below of the 5.5, and then you can come with this UKB IELTS re reference of uh, the precious English course. But if you got a non UKB IELTS, and if you got one of the band is below 5.5, uh, unfortunately, the university will not accept this IELTS at all. So this is the only the difference because they cannot put this reference uh, of non-UQB IELTS in their cast letter 
as a part of their assessment. If they uh, put the assessment in a cast letter, they have to put the reference and they have to put on the UQBI reference number. So non-UQBI IELTS do not have any UQBI reference number at all. This is the main difference. So if you play, if you're not confident enough, I would recommend you to go for the uh, UQBI, uh, I mean the IELTS as well. And I can ask you, I uh, would like to ask one more question about the registration. Why uh, the prospective students should come to British Council for the IELTS registration? What are the facilities or benefits they might uh, gain through this registration? Thank you very much for that question. Actually, I wanted to share that information with you. Um, uh, the students don't need to come to us for registration, actually. The registration can be done online, uh, first of all. And if they're not confident enough, they can go to one of our offices. And on the top of that, we are not actually encouraging always uh, to come uh, to do a long travel and come to our office. We have a lot of agencies, uh, our partners like H and Z. H and Z is our partner. So the students can go to you and do the registration with your support. They can also um, uh, get the support if they're not very confident about doing it on their own in the online registration. Obviously, your office, somebody will be there to help them. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. you also can collect the money from them and uh, do complete the registration for them. Uh, not only that, in some cases, the students are not really very sure like which one to take, when to take. Uh, in those cases, uh, you also can give them the counseling. Yes, uh, yes. Like they, 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 they're not very much sure, like either UKVI or regular IELTS. So yes. if once they register, they may lose the money. So inst yes. instead of that, they, if they can get your support at the first point and do everything uh, with a partner like you, with a renowned partner like you. So in that case, it makes our life easy and the candidate's life easy as well. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you have a uh, focused very right question about the uh, why the student uh, should uh, take the advantages as well um, uh, if they are having difficulties. First of all, when you come to a counselor, as I uh, mentioned earlier today, most of our counselors studied at the UK university and they've been uh, working in this industry for a long time. So they can, once they really speak to you, they will understand your requirements, what actually is needed. If they feel like quite confident enough, the university you are going and they will accept UQBI, non uqa both. And they will, uh, may, they will maybe offer you, say, oh, why you want to spend more money going for the no UQBI IELTS because it's costly. So you go for the non uqbi you save the money, you get the unconditional offer letter as well. Uh, also, if you are IELTS is not up to, uh, I mean, the preparation is not up to the grade and you are not maybe accepting up to B2 level of the uh, course requirements, whatever it is then you should actually take a consultation and it will make the life easier for British Council because once you do the registration, and I think it's quite difficult for them. I'm not sure that they can change it, but I don't they, think- If they want to change, they need to pay extra. So why, we're not encouraging yeah. anybody to pay extra. Yes, so well, you better you do the counseling, you come to us and you do the counseling, whatever you need. And once our council will know that then uh, you can do every registration and everything in our office. You don't have to come to the, uh, uh, I mean, the British Council to pay the money as well. You don't have to do only the the day of test. You will uh, require to have the uh, need to go, and you will be notified accordingly as well. How the test center, what is the date, and everything. So just want uh, to add one yeah. thing: uh, if somebody is registered with uh, British Council, uh, they get the thirty-hour-long course free. Um, it's an online course. Uh, we, uh, we call the platform Road to ILTS. And mm -hmm. it costs around $25 for registration for that platform. They get the mock test, they get the preparation material. And um, uh, based on when they're sitting for the test, uh, that uh, system plan for their study. Uh, so this is all uh, free for all the registered candidates. The first benefit. And the second benefit is when they're registering through one of our IRCs like H and Z, uh, we are regular of working with our partners to support the students who are either planning to sit for IELTS or already registered. So we run different kind of workshop with our partners. Um, uh, 
and uh, uh, people like Ashik Bhai, the experts, are running those workshops for us. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Ashik Bhai, once again. Yes, we and, are coming uh, details on this. Yeah, we are coming details in in few minutes. Yes, and uh, uh, Mrs. Sarot, uh, just in terms of the business intelligence and uh, putting these, uh, I mean, the registration to with your partners, I think that's made the life easier to wide number of students. Uh, even because uh, uh, British Council cannot run uh, 50 branches in Bangladesh. That's not possible. But oh, the, obviously yes. not. We don't have yes. the capacity. Yeah, you could not have. But when you're giving this uh, position to the partners and the students do not require to have a travel and all the all the way come for the registration and might be quite difficult at the moment, especially like it's such a COVID-19 situation. I, I think that how come this uh, business intelligence came at the same time you're giving these two things to the student uh, they can before they do the registration they have a proper counseling and they come to H and Z as well like they know that what they need to do and on the base of this they can do the registration as well as uh, you said uh, Mrs. Sawad that, that uh, dear viewers you can come to H and Z the, all the branches Dhaka, Silet, Chitago, all the branches uh, and then our colleague will do the complete registration and only the day you will do the seat for the test, you have to go to the test center, and that will be also notified through you after your registration completion as well. And I think it's and let's back to the preparation. One of the important part about for the IELTS because um, even myself, uh, when I did my IELTS, I was quite scared of IELTS, and I took the first time after completing my graduation from Dhaka University. So I used to leave. Uh, in a hall, puzzle lock hall, but at the same time, and uh, my uh, our house was uh, in uh, Rampura, but uh, just to concentrate on IELTS, I didn't go to my house after completing <laughs> my graduation for three months, and I didn't do very well. On that time, I got a five point five, and I came in the pre session English course for a few months as well, like the many of this uh, our Pasuki students back in two thousand four. But I found like many of the students quite scared of the IELTS. And I would like to come uh, uh, Mr. Ashik Rahman, he's long experience uh, working in as a supporting lots of workshops and uh, how to develop in the every individual. If you can, many of the our possibility, I can see large number of uh, uh, students watching us as well. And they might not have, have this uh, type of opportunities to come to you to know more details to get some tips as well so if, i would like to give you enough time to elaborate about how the student can do particularly writing reading one of the key scary part is reading trust me i can see speaking and listening as well if you can cover a bit more details thank you so you want me to give a talk on all the modules <laughs> <laughs> yes, all together if you can please please that, all right it's a great very, very difficult yes. job yes thank you a uh, very difficult job to cover everything because I have a lot of a lot of things to say here. Uh, I don't know how to touch on everything generally um, because the question is very general. I hear it's very general. I never faced such a question. Anyway, um, if I start, if I am not wrong, you are asking about four skills, all the four skills, yes. how yes. to get better support in all the four skills, right? So let me start with, say, for example, listening and reading. So listening and reading, these are these two I put together because both of them are receptive skills. Mm -hmm. And say writing and speaking, writing and speaking, both of them are productive skills. So in listening and sorry, yes. there's interruption. In listening and speaking, they assess you how much you can receive as it is a receptive skill by listening and by reading. So when it comes to listening, how they assess the listening ability. So they, there is a term like, you know, an exam that goes on for 30 minutes and you get extra 10 minutes for transferring the questions. So exam, uh, in the exam, you will get to hear lots of conversations in four different sections. Um, in some sections, there'll be more than one discourses you will hear. In some sections, especially in the last section, you'll hear one long discourse, which is a monologue. 
So you'll hear the questions. You'll get the questions before you listen. You hear the hear the conversation and answer the questions. That that is how they assess your listening ability. That's a very general view. So as the question also includes how you can improve, I would say um, when you practice in this pandemic situation, you have a lot of time at home. So listening and reading, you have you can practice at home a lot. So um, when you practice listening test. i recommend you all the time take a full test like you know some candidates end up taking a section in the morning and another section in the afternoon that's a wrong idea take a whole test because that's another ability to take the pressure and hold the concentration for long 30 minutes on one track and listen all right that's one thing and i would also suggest you to take the same test again and again suppose you have taken one test that was from cambridge exam papers you have taken suppose cambridge stand test number 1 maybe you got a poor or moderate score but don't leave it research on the given test the test you have taken do it again look at the wrong answers why your answers went wrong do it over and over two or three times and last time you should listen to it with a script at the end of the books cambridge exam papers official exam papers you will find the scripts of all the discourses you hear on the scripts you will i mean the written scripts when i say i mean tap script records you will listen and see like subtitle that will improve you that will help you get used to it the english intonation system that's for listening when it comes to reading it is also a receptive skill in reading they assess your ability to understand by reading so in reading skills uh, reading uh, module they actually assess two reading skills one is your comprehension rate how much you understand 100% 80% or 60% or what then also they assess your reading speed how many words can you read in one minute like what per minute what per minute um usually good readers read 500 words per minute very good very good or very expert readers can read even 1000 words per minute so speed is something which is neglected in many of the education systems in this asian continent so yeah if, if most of the candidates complain that yeah in ielts reading the time is very limited but you should look back to yourself that am i a slow reader or a fast reader so you have to work on speed reading that's an important thing assessed here not just understanding ability also the speed so work on this and how you can develop your reading skill as the question is very general i will be on general surface level i would give you one tip that is um, there are two types of reading i i would suggest you one is extensive reading habit development other one is your intensive reading practice extensive reading means you are growing the habit of reading you make yourself a reader first of all ask yourself are you a reader do you read every day do you read columns articles books stories story books or you just read a um, small status on facebook are you a reader or not that is the first question so you should have the habit of reading left and right anything any novel anything that interests you read anything be yourself make yourself a reader that will make you or help you get concentration hold concentration for a long time if you are not a reader you cannot do well in the reading test that's one thing you should do even bengali no problem you can read bangla your in your mother tongue but you have to have the reading habit secondly the intensive reading practice that is take ielts reading test from cambridge exam official papers published these are the previous questions test papers when you take a test again in reading you will find this in one hour test there will be three sections three passages in academic case five passages in case of general training but three sections all the time and there will be 40 questions to answer in one hour so when you take the reading test again don't just do one passage and then take rest no take the whole test and use a stopwatch because time is speed is part of your reading skill so take the whole test all the time again like listening i would say research on the given test the test you have already taken do research on that look uh, look at the answers which went wrong why are they wrong then you will understand the techniques you will learn, you will discover the techniques which teachers share with you so there are different techniques for answering different types of reading questions i am not going into that that will 
take hours after hours if I go into it. I'm just leaving, keeping it on the surface level. So to summarize, I would say for practicing, you grow the habit of extensive reading. At the same time, you practice reading test, take a whole test. And when a test is over, don't just throw it away. Research on it before going to the second test. That's all about the receptive skills, listening and um, reading. Now let's move on to the productive skill where you produce, where you deliver, that is speaking and writing. So it's not easy to assess someone's speaking skill or writing skill, very tough job. I think um, IELTS does it very well. Uh, it's an invisible thing like how, what kind of speaker you are, your B, B1 level or B2 level or nine level or eight level difficult to assess in speaking, what they do is they take an interview from you, which goes on for 11 to 14 minutes. In 11 to 14 minutes, you are put into different situations. Part one, part two, part three have different, three different situations. In part one, it goes on for four to five minutes. Here you'll be asked some questions on familiar topics um, after getting introduced with you. Examiner will ask you like, you know, questions on known topics like your friends, your hobbies, your favorite things, your likings, dislikings, your favorite plays, or your childhood memories, your future plan, easy questions will go on, questions and answers in part one that will go on for four to five minutes. Then part two is again a different situation here. You will be given to ask a speech. You'll be given a topic. You'll get one minute to prepare for a speech and you will have to speak uh, or give a speech for one to two minutes, minimum one minute, maximum two minutes. So here you'll be given topic, also a pen and paper for making notes and one minute preparation time. So the question is what kind of topics here you will get. There are basically four types of topics. Some topics are about places, some topics are about people, and some topics are about things, and some topics are about actions and activities. Places like a place of natural beauty, a place of historical importance, people like a famous people you like, or a singer, favorite singer, favorite player, etc., and actions like a party you attended, a celebration you did, um, any any kind of action or a competition you took part in. Uh, things include a, an object like a gift you got from someone, etc., etc. So these are the four types of topics. There may be some topics out of these categories. Anyway, this is an easy part. Here you need to be organized and give us this one situation. And the third situation is there will be a, an extended discourse in the part three, which will also go on for four to five minutes where examiner will engage you in a discussion. It's no more just a question and answer situation. It's a discussion. It's a like a talk show. Now to now we are doing like a disc, uh, like a BBC hard talk. Here you will you'll be asked your opinion about things going on in the world things going on in your society, about different issues, problems, situations, you give your opinion, argue to support your opinion, examiner might challenge you, counter argument, and you will have to again support your opinion. So that is a very engaging situation, most interesting and most important part, the third part, and which requires the maximum language skill to go into the into detail of discussion, developing the topic, extending it at minute level. So that's very important. So these are the three parts in the interview, this is a live session. You, it's a face, the IELTS is the only exam in the world where you face an examiner live, face to face in person, and which is very good because a computer cannot do a human job all the time because there are different types of candidates. So IELTS speaking test is the best speaking test in the world, I would say, in my opinion, from my linguistic background, I, I consider it a very good assessment and it's very easy and comfortable, very much candidate friendly. So don't worry about it. This exam will take place after or before the listening, speaking and writing test on a separate day. And then comes the last one, writing. Writing is a bit challenging. There are two parts in writing. One is called task one, one is called, one other one is called task two. Task two is similar for both types of candidates, you know, there are two modes of IELTS, academic and general training, getting for the students, general training for the um, immigration. So for the academic and general training, uh, writing task two would be the same or similar, I would say. Here you will be given a topic or issue. You will have to write a 250 word essay, taking a position, supporting your position, giving ideas and developing paragraphs, etc. 
but task one is different in task one you get to like you know uh, like for academic if you are a student for higher education if you are taking ielts you will have to write a report looking at a graph looking at some numerical information on a graph or on a diagram you have to extract the numerical information and write a report uh, showing your observation so it depends on your observation ability the way you observe the numerical information and report your report should be very eye opening should be something which candidates normal people don't see on on the on the diagram but you report like open their eyes there's lots of um, like you know eye opening information at the same time uh, for the gt candidates that's very easy they will write a letter letter to a friend letter to a boss like formal or informal letter that's this task one will have to be at least of 150 words you will get 20 minutes for task one and 40 minutes for task two total one hour test that's writing so for writing and speaking this is how they assess these are the productive skills for writing and ski writing and speaking how you practice, how you develop, this general question has been asked to me and that's a test for me, how to answer. Yeah. I don't know, well, as I'm not you. getting uh, into I think, it, uh, I'd uh, say... Anyway, you have uh, gathered lots of information uh, about uh, all the key parts, <laughs> how to develop as well. question, what, what question the, was a challenge for me, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's fine. Yes. One of the important things, Ashik, yeah. right, that uh, our uh, students always are scared uh, to sit for the IELTS. How, why is that and how we can bring them because uh, uh, they can take a, see a test without any fairness, you know. Uh, I have you, one question. I think that's, yeah. yes. Have you found yeah. any student, they are not scared of exam or even you talk about yourself or myself, we are all scared of exam. So uh, Actually, whether it's skills or uh, not. Yes. Uh, um, I'm just sharing my information with you. So I, after completing my, you know, uh, bachelor degree from Dhaka University in mathematics, so I came to Batrusha University to um, uh, do the, my master degree. And uh, it was a Luton University on that time. I, I think you might know that before. So uh, I actually we, uh, couldn't join one of the classes. There was a test taken here uh, in my precious English course. It was a two months, eight weeks precious English course. So they failed me. So because of they failed me, they cannot promote me to the main course. I had no other option. Either I have to pay again 2,800 pounds once again and to retake this course, or I have to bring the ILTS 6 because the entry requirements for that course was 6. So I say better spend 200 pounds, take, uh, take this challenge. And I uh, came from all the way from Luton to Westminster University to sit for this uh, test. And I got a six from five after three months. And I actually had no other choice because I can't afford again 2,800 pounds. I had no other choice. So on that time, obviously, uh, I had no choice. But I, uh, because I was determined that I could do, and that is why I think I, I uh, have this passed is, to be This on is school. one thing, and you already given your answer for the students this is one thing you mentioned that when you came to uk when you went to uk your score was 5.5 and within three months time first thing your determination that i understand but the second thing the environment you were yeah, like environment, yeah. all the time you had to speak english you had to listen to english you, had, you were in that english speaking environment that helped you to develop your language skill very very quickly Yes, so I think yes. this is a very, I, uh, obviously Ashik Bhai will, uh, can say better than me, but um, from my experience, I also said that if you think about uh, like it's an extra pressure of learning a language or extra pressure of taking a test, that will kill you actually. Exactly, but exactly. If you consider it, this is your opportunity. And if you practice not taking any extra burden, like watching like not as you mentioned that bbc uh, listening to them uh, reading newspapers and practice not really taking that pressure that you have to sit for the exam and that's why you're taking the load um, i think you'll do much better yes uh, uh, about the fear factor about yes 
about the Go fear ahead. factor, I would like to add one one thing. That's very normal, as Sarotapa said. Is very I would say it's a fantasy to imagine that someone will have no fear. Some fear is important. You have to be some somewhat nervous. That will help. That will put you on track. That's important. Fear is an important element in us, isn't it? Yes. So how can you minimize it? That is the question. Uh, I would say um, this test is different from all the tests you have taken in your life. This is not testing your knowledge or it's not an SSCHSC, no. blah, blah, blah. It is, an, it is testing or assessing the language construct which is existing in you. It's, IELTS is trying to take a picture of your abilities. It is not, ex, IELTS is not expecting that you will go beyond your abilities. You just perform as, as part of your ability. That will, yeah. that will be enough. That is one thing. Another thing is how can you minimize the fear? Uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Fears or the lack of confidence. I would say you need to create some success examples in your life that I did in one interview very well. I did in one writing good score that will build up confidence in you. So how can you create success example? Referring back to Saratap, I would say that, yeah, practice, a lot of practice and learning, a lot of hard work will help you get a good score in a mock test or model test. That is a success example, which will build up confidence in you. And one day will not fear much, but some fear should be there. It should not be fully fearless. I don't recommend that. Thank yeah, you very much. Exactly. And um, one thing, determination, the shyness, we need to come out. Uh, we need to come out from the shyness. This is one of the issue because um, uh, when I was uh, in my, uh, in Bangladesh, when I was starting, so a few of my classmates, they came from English medium and uh, they are cooperating in my classes solely in English. So my understanding was if they are speaking English, I came from a rural area of Bangladesh and I can't speak uh, English that much. But uh, my determination was uh, it, because if, uh, those are the uh, community who they are uh, teacher in English, why I cannot? And I start talking to the teacher, but everyone was laughing in the classes because my English was not up to the grade. And obviously, and uh, well, it's not actually even, I think it was B1 level, but I was thinking like if people can, uh, you know, laugh at me. It doesn't make any difference for me. I need to come out and to learn. And the uh, other way, we, as a viewers, as a learner, the students, uh, I have a two uh, seniors, experts in this industry. But I can think that uh, I can just tell you one of the issue that a learning, the way you learn Bangla, you learn a single word from your mom and dad and you start mom and dad uh, the following in five or six months when you are in age. So you start one or two or then uh, two or then three or then you make a sentence. And in Bangla, in your local language, it's just quite similar thing as English. So you need to identify at the moment you are your teacher, you know what level you are. You are a beginner level or intermediate level or advanced level. You categorize yourself. If you are reading the book, you know, you, you can't read, um, you know, the newspaper because it's quite maybe by, very high standard English. But obviously, the level you are, you can also Google it. Lots of uh, information, lots of uh, inf uh, informative uh, books. Uh, according to your level, you'll get it. This sort of thing can help you as well. What type of, uh, uh, either if you are a beginner, you should start as a beginner. If you are the intermediate level, so you, uh, depends on you are, you should assess yourself. And you should move forward from there, how you can go advanced level further. That is the, one of the key terms. I think for the U developments at the end of the day. And of course, uh, Ashiku by is uh, in British Council as well, is con uh, continuously supporting through the lots of supporting workshop. You can be yours, take an advantage as well. If you need a counseling in terms of the students, uh, if you plan to study at the UK University and you're planning to know that what would be the suitable test as well, today in the through the live session, you got the our colleagues contact details. You can pick up the number and they will be able to guide you further as well. And we are, our office is limited uh, edition is open, maintaining the social distancing, three to four colleagues coming and uh, remaining working from home. So uh, if you're planning to come and visit us as well, please do contact to the team and take an appointment. Without appointment, uh, we are actually not in the position to accommodate anyone to give the one-to-one -one counseling session as well. And we are all thinking positively. We are moving forward for the September session as well. And we are the, also from the IELTS, from the British Council, they are trying to do everything they can. Some of the questions today, you guys ask about the BFS Center 
and also the TV test matter as well. Everyone is assessing the scenarios. The university dragged their intake to the September to October. So you have a sufficient time as well. And also for you kind information, BFS British Council, BFS Center in India is already uh, opening from 6th of July, if I'm not wrong. And uh, we are hoping very soon we'll get the positive message about IELTS and also the BFS Center as well. And by this time, the best option you have at the moment to take the offer letter in your hand, you can contact to the counselors and uh, submit your documents without IELTS and you get the conditional offer letter. Soon you got the conditional offer letter and then the, uh, when the opportunity will be coming for the IELTS or IELTS indicator it, if it is accepted by the particular university, you can take this uh, test as well. But IELTS indicator, if they are on the, uh, the university or the British Council or English uh, IELTS test center will be open physically, it will not be valid anymore, I would say, am I right? Uh, am I right, Appa? If you uh, can kindly allow me. So, yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. yes. So, at the moment, you can take the test if you can plan ahead. If the university city accept you, you can take, but it will no longer be valid afterwards. Uh, uh, soon the situation will be back to normal. Right. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, cover the uh, this uh, next session about the today's part about completing opportunities after completing your study in the UK. Uh, because uh, obviously, uh, British Council, BFS Center, and uh, IELTS, uh, everyone getting busy following the post-study work uh, while the uh, British uh, government uh, launched and uh, which will be implemented from next year summer. So uh, the, whoever is coming to the UK, if you're coming for the bachelor course or master's course, Soon you complete your uh, bachelor degree or master degree from the UK from next summer onward, and you'll be eligible to have the under two year visa to gain the work action from the UK. This is the fantastic opportunities. This opportunity came back after I think um, um, around 10 years. After 10 years, within last 10 years, we struggle a lot. The university struggle a lot as well, and also had to do lots of uh, work out how. Uh, they can promote the um, international students to come in the UK. And finally, uh, the universities, the heads and the, uh, the lobbying group uh, succeeded and the British government approved that they will allow the British, uh, the, all the students coming from the uh, other countries, international students will be eligible to have the uh, two years visa as well. Uh, from the summer onward, I mean, the, from June uh, next year, 2021. This is one of the important thing I would uh, must share about the Brexit. Brexit uh, opened the door for the international students and it uh, opened the opportunities for the international students as well. And I would say from 2021 January, uh, all of the uh, EU students, those who are planning to come in the UK and the international student, all will be treated equally. It has been uh, published in the UKBI website as well. And if you are required to have this session, I'm, I'll, sh I'll just share the link because I cannot cover a long time. We have already in a one hour session as well, but I'm just sharing the link as well um, uh, for the viewers so that they can go through more details and can also identify the opportunities. Uh, after the post-study work scheme, and if you come to study at the UK University and afterwards uh, you, come, you get the post-study two year visa, the question is coming, what could happen afterwards? So I sent you the link as well for all the viewers. The uh, British government uh, also introduced a new point-based system. This point-based system will allow you after post-study work to have the, to find out a sponsor uh, to gain the, uh, to uh, apply to the point-based system, which is actually uh, just, I would say, like carbon copy of the Australian migration system as well. So it is like 20 points if you have a, uh, if you uh, have any sponsor, if anyone allow you to um, sponsor you for the work, um, any company, that's the 20 points. And then uh, because of the, uh, you will have a skill by this time after completing your bachelor degree or master degree and point based system, you will have under 20 points as well. And because of you have a degree, uh, only for the degree as a part of the English requirements, 
you will have under 10 points so this is the 50 points and afterwards uh, and you are required to go to the salary and uh, other categories so if any of the colleague uh, any of the anyone work in the uk or uh, after two to three years of time if you are categorized as a skill worker and if you just earn around 11 to 12 pounds per hour as a full-time worker while at the moment the minimum wages of eight pound 50 pence around so uh, if you get around 12 pounds per hour 40 hours per week you'll be obviously you'll be able to gain earn around 26,000 pounds per year which will allow you to gain under further 20 points as well and you are required to have 70 points and you can get easily these 70 points as well but apart from this apart from this you will have if you want to if you start come here come in the uk any other shortest occupation a health related course engineering course and you can also gain a further 20 points as well but or if you do the phd as well you also will have a further 20 points as well so i have sent the link for your understanding and on the page end of this page you will have a uh, the 70 points you are required to have eligible uh, to uh, apply for the point based system on this page you will have everything all the opportunities how what you need to do how is going to work as all well, and how the 70 points will be calculated as well and i believe it is a great opportunities for the uh, international students this point based system actually uh, came after a long time after 10 to 12 years after after this big day. so as international students, as a students from uh, Bangladesh, large number of students coming every year in the UK, this is a fantastic opportunity for you to come in a competition with the European students, with the, uh, the South Asian students, uh, around the world students. And I believe you have such a potential abilities and to able to gain the settlements or uh, to look after the uh, look for your future in the UK. And I would like to, I'm not actually covering quite long this session because I have covered a couple of sessions about this matter over the period of time with the, uh, many other our partners. But we will go ahead with all the questions today and we'll cover end of our session. And uh, I just wanted to see uh, uh, some of the questions just bringing up. Is in the UK, there are any scholarship? Okay, uh, this actually, um, how much I'll seek out, uh, is need for the UK universities? You are required to have, if you're planning to study B2 level of English, sorry, uh, for the master's course or PhD course, you are required to have a B2 level of uh, IELTS. And I would uh, recommend you to book for the, uh, try to book for the IELTS. And I think you can register at the moment uh, if I'm uh, not wrong. Can you register at the moment? Yes, uh, registration is open. So yes. they can, I will request them to register for August not in okay. july because we are not 100 percent sure whether we can start okay. in july or not uh, so just to be in the safe side yes so what you do um, uh, mr shubo asarji you can uh, come to our office and uh, do complete registration and also we can uh, we'll also update you whoever will be your counselor they will be also guiding as well for you um, direct uh, phd after getting your masters in uh, the NA scholarship there are number of universities that is uh, offering the PhD fully funded scholarship as well, number of these. If you plan to study in master's course, that's, that will be an additional advantage for you because after master's degree, you will have a two years post-study work visa. During this time, we'll have a sufficient time for you to have the full-time, I mean the fully funded PhD program and you can meet many scholars, many university supervisors as well. And uh, if you convince any supervisor, that will not be any problem as well. Many university got a many way out for the PhD programs. The best way is if you talk to the our counselors, expertise, they will be able to guide you further. Thank you. And uh, if you have to apply for the January session main course on the pre-session English course. Uh, okay, if you say that if you want to apply for the January session main course, then when should I apply for the pre-session English course? The pre-session English course will be completely depending on your IELTS achievements. So first of all, what is the IELTS standard? We need to see if you got a B1 level or B2 level. If you uh, get the B2 level directly, you are not required to sit for the, uh, you're not required to apply for the pre-session English course. If you've not uh, applied with the IELTS yet, 
the best way is do register for the IELTS and uh, once you get the IELTS uh, uh, marks or uh, result in hand, we can tell you that when you teach an English course or that it is required, if it is required, how many weeks. If you have a 0.5 difference, for example, the requirements is 6 IELTS, but if you have uh, overall 5.5, maybe you got a 0.5 gaps, then you might record have only 4 weeks. So we can only assess on the base of your IELTS achievements. I would recommend you to sit for the to register for the IELTS soon. You get the uh, clear signal from signal from IELTS uh, British Council. Then they will be able to guide you for the actual date as well. So do sit for this. I know it will be very competitive for you to secure the seat. Uh, I, I think that's I would say. Am I right? It, it will be quite competitive. Um, we will try to provide sit as much as possible, but because of the situation, we need to maintain the social distancing. So if the, um, if we have the hall 400 candidates, we cannot really take exam for more than 50 in the same hall because we need to keep enough distance and um, keep the measure for health and safety. So that's why I think initially there will be some uh, crisis and uh, some students they are already registered so we need to place them uh, first come first up basis yes uh, so first few uh, i think few weeks there will be crisis yes. the best thing is as soon as you sit for the test a book for the test you you will come uh, up at a priority base as well so that do of not course. wait for the last moment because if you wait for the last moment you might lose your intake you might lose your january you might lose your september you don't know which in take you are missing, you, you don't know. And because of the post-study work, I would also share with you uh, implementation. Uh, the application number at the UK University went 500 times up, 500 times. Before we used to get the offer letter within 72 hours, 48 hours. Now we're getting offer letter in three weeks time. And this, uh, the delay is increasing um, uh, the time. And uh, with the, the, uh, the time, the deadline we are approaching, the offer letter is uh, coming actually uh, quite after like three to four weeks and uh, it's, uh, keep delaying this uh, all the process. So uh, do not wait for uh, anything. First of all, do come to the office and book for you. Uh, do uh, cover one session completely one hour. You uh, whatever the question you have, uh, take all the questions and answer from your mind about the preparation of the aisles, about the, uh, the course you're looking for, about the offer letter. You, so you make your own mind, you make it, Take it as a project. If you take it as a project, okay, I have to do this project as a deadline. I have to sit for the IELTS. I have to prepare. I have to get the result in hand. And then you can all, I think, that come out in the conclusion towards your success, I would say. So do not wait at home and do not waste your time as well. Then you lose everything. About the BFS Center and uh, about the BFS Center and Embassy, and uh, everyone uh, currently monitoring the situation. And we can get back to you within two weeks' time. And I'm hoping to do and the session within two weeks. Soon we get a good news from the uh, embassy and the BV center and also everyone. And I will also announce as soon as I'll, um, uh, I'll get a good uh, green signal from uh, Mrs. Sarod. Uh, as soon as I get a good news, I will also come to the live as well. And I'll, uh, sure. if you get a chance, and I'll try to bring you for five to 10 minutes to announce that you are taking that so that we can uh, truly uh, book for you guys as well. So are all the just want, to add yes. one thing, just want to add one thing. If somebody is really waiting to sit for the ILTS, maybe wait for uh, a month or so, then the, he or she needs to really, really needs to take IELTS. So think about the CDLs, computer delivered. Um, yes. If you are going to UK or any other countries, uh, UK specific here with A, H and Z, if we are going to one of the universities and if we don't have the IT skills, the basic computer skills, the typing speed, then you cannot really cope in UK because everything you need to do in computers and uh, you need to take notes, you need to write your assignment and everything. So pra start practicing because we find some resistance in the CDLs. In some cases, students, they think that um, am I okay, I'm getting ready for pen and paper based. I cannot really go for the CDLs. But uh, when you start uh, taking the IELTS, maybe it may happen that we'll start with CDLs first uh, because CDLs is more convenient for um, the candidates and for administrator 
like us. So we start with the CDL, so you will get better chance, better opportunities if you practice for the computer delivery. Thank you very much. Uh, Mahfuz Rahman Rocky, the question about permanent citizenship and the job of state in the UK, completing the post graduate, what is the process? Uh, I think we have covered a little bit already about this. I have sent out also the links. Also, I would advise you because of the post study work, two year visa at the moment, uh, work visa been implemented up for those who will be completing their bachelor degree or master degree from June onward next year. And after that, the, the, there is also point B system implemented, which has not actually taken place before. And this is an opportunity for you. Go through the link and you'll get the more details on it as well, how it was. Uh, it is actually splitted on the uh, how the point view system will be. And if you have more questions, please do come back to uh, our colleagues and they will be able to help you. And you can also visit our office as well. And uh, I'm not sure either this question uh, is a part of your code of contact or you can tell. One of the viewers I want to know that uh, how we differ uh, British Council IELTS and IDP IELTS. And uh, if you may, have, may I? May I? Uh, you can? <laughs> uh, yes, sure. Um, actually, yes. IMTS is a uh, product uh, where British Council, IDP, and Cambridge University, we are the partners, where Cambridge University is looking after all the, uh, uh, the uh, knowledge-based thing, the actual testing, uh, the research and development, and taking the, making the question paper, and uh, testing, actually assessing the question paper, giving the grades where British Council is IDP is the distributor. So we are distributing the same test, the same dates, similar places. Uh, in some places, British Council run uh, the ILTS where IDP doesn't. Uh, in some places where IDP runs the test where British Council doesn't, but actually the test is same. You will get the difference by seeing the quality of test delivery. The British Council is a very big brand you can you, you may know that we are doubt. no doubt about that. It's a like global brand, and we have to maintain and we have to maintain a certain quality. Um, that I can guarantee you from our uh, the the way we handle our customer, the way we give you the extra benefit. Extra benefit means the package, the total package. It's not only the test, uh, the way you register, um, the support that you are going to get from British Council, from the partners, actually, the way we are managing our partners, um, the overall, the exam hall experience, uh, the quality of the cus uh, customer services people there, the invigilators and everything. Like one difference I can mention that we are using uh, the ultra modern headphones, which is very important for listening part. Where uh, the, our other partner is using the WAD one. So that's the previous version. So obviously you can hear better. If you don't hear better, you cannot really answer your uh, the question uh, that answered the questions properly. So these are the basic difference of running the test, this, but actually yes. the test this is, is same. yes, yes, no. Uh, in addition, I think the uh, while you are taking because of course the as you said the British Council is uh, uh, the name is also its own band. So once uh, it is uh, coming with the IELTS and the British Council and is uh, the band standard goes completely different. So when you go to the band, it always goes with the quality as well. And yes. the second and thing we, that... We yeah. consider our customer first, always. This is the uh, worldwide uh, standard for British Council. That's why actually we, we couldn't really start taking the test because for Bangladesh, we have to ensure that our candidates who are co coming for the test, they're in the, not in the risk. If they're in the risk, then we cannot really say anything. That's why we couldn't really get any approval from our global office yet. Um, okay. So that's the difference. Yes. The another th uh, in addition, the new addition for you, uh, approving some of you close ally like AH and Z associates and uh, giving the opportunity because many times the student even doesn't know what they are doing and they're doing the registration, yeah. general uh, registration for study academic registration they want to come in the uk they are doing the different type of registration it is making the difference even they are taking the test and the end of the day after getting the result and they go, come to us we say oh sorry we, we can't do anything with this ilts uh, 
result because you took the wrong test. And it's very common. It's, I think 10, 15 person always we, come with this. Always. We always so, suggest them to go to a professional. Um, like British Council is a professional organization for taking exams. Not only IELTS, but also school exams, but also the other kind of exams, even the um, uh, professional exams that like SCCA, like MRCP exams that has been taken by British Council. So we are in the the exam sector for so many years and age and z is supporting you to choose the right university according to your need to choose the right course choose the right type time for exam choose the right type of exam and uh, for the placement as well because if you are uh, like uh, contacting with the universities on your own you if you if you are good in it it's completely fine but if you need if you are not really that confident maybe um, you can support them for uh, getting some scholarship as well some reduced fee as well because you you know which university is offering what yes uh, thank you and the uh, there's a common uh, the question i think we have covered a uh, bit as well uh, is ukbi uh, ukbi ielts uh, only for uk can i apply every country and UK by normal IELTS, British Council IELTS, UKBI IELTS, IDP course, uh, UKBI, okay. And actually, I think we have covered most of these uh, in our today's session about like, um, but of course, the UKBI IELTS, I think it's been used in all other countries as well. You can use, am I right? Um, Academic one. Bar, if there is no bar, uh, if they are, they are saying we are taking only regular IELTS, that's a different thing. Uh, but depending on the university, please ask your university. Uh, you must have a plan where you want to go. So exactly. ask the university. Now, every every university is very open because they they want to take you as a student as well. So yeah, they you're will the student. Yeah. You're buying their products. Yeah, uh, you are buying the product. You are the customer. So if you ask them uh, whether UKVI is accepted by this university, um, then you sit for the UKVI. Otherwise, uh, for other countries, I think regular IELTS will be okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And then okay, let's can go I please. add one one line yes, with please, this? Please. Then so you keep like, silent for a while. If yeah. you take, yeah, if you take. UKVI, you, you are allowed to go to UK and anywhere in the world. Right. And if you take normal, normal right. IELTS, you can go anywhere except UK. Thank you. But some uh, universities right, in the UK I more? Uh, yes. <laughs> some universities in the UK, they will uh, not bother because... Uh, they will not bother, yes. They will not bother. As long as you're meeting their uh, standard requirements... Maybe, no issues. But is it not a visa requirement as well? No, no, it, it is not a visa requirements. Uh, is a visa requirements is you have a uh, point based system. Tire four point based system. You have a cast letter, thirty points. You have a maintenance fund, ten points. Soon as you got a forty points, and uh, you should be eligible for the visa. Exactly uh, following the genuineness interview. So. Um, only uh, uh, the test is set by the UKBI to the university to assess the student. So if the university say, I will, I will accept it, doesn't matter. The home office will not impact on your visa as well. Thank you. I think uh, you this all right, question. All right, you know better. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, the, you could, this question actually uh, cover most of the critical part to this conversation to understand the student as well. Uh, so types of uh, okay like okay general uh, this is the I have completed my postgraduate uh, degree 2010 but now I want to call the guys so which type of IELTS need me like academic or general I think this is very common uh, we need to know either you plan to study or you plan to um, uh, settle down uh, in abroad am I right Appa? yes general training is fully for those uh, who are going to work uh, and academic is migration. you can uh, uh, work yeah. or migration. Yes, academic yeah. is for academic study. Okay. Shikma, so do you want to add anything? No, no, it's okay. It's, it's a very common question. It's okay. 
you, you're going to you go to other countries, okay? And uh, you can, I think you have already covered. You could be a uh, IELTS are a uh, same, but you could be a uh, also you student visa, okay? Okay, we have covered those station already, so we are not going through the, all the questions. Just displaying because you have typed this, we should display what you are asked for. Is uh, okay? That's actually we cannot uh, cover in this session. Right, I would like to take a part in internal exam. Yes, please do contact our uh, colleagues and they will be able to help you out if you wanted to do so. Can I, okay, uh, not relevant actually. This also already covered. Right, I think uh, so many questions. I'm doing my master's English, uh, so can I double master's. Yes, you can do and the master's degree as long as you will have a clear justification and have a clear uh, career aspiration then it will not be a problem for you as well. And why should you choose to study as a UK destination? There are lots I can talk. I can talk about hundreds of hours of time about why the people should study at the UK university. Myself, I study it. Upper also study it. Uh, Ashik Bay also promoting as a student. Most likely, uh, British Council is all promoting the UK brand, UK education. Simple as that. So we it's all, a very uh, big investment. I think yes. it's a very big, good investment because yes. uh, if you want to do any kind of business or uh, want to take any fruit out of your education, education is a good business. And if you want to invest somewhere, UK universities, once you uh, got the degree from a good university, if you want to stay there, it's very good. If you want to come back, go to any other country, that degree will actually help. Uh, like uh, Murtaja yeah. Bhai, and for my case, it's helping a lot. Yes, definitely. definitely. I'm not sure, Murtaja Bhai, whether you are based in UK or in Bangladesh. Uh, actually, I'm based in the UK now. Good. So, I, I live in, uh, uh, I think you've been to London, right? Yes, several times. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, li I live in uh, Canary Wharf. Oh, that's, that's the so, new city. Yeah, so Canary Wharf is... Uh, uh, my actually is very nice view. Uh, I, I could have a shown you personally, but um, we, I'm just hundred very... years, hundred years away from the all the top banks. Barclays head office is just hundred years away. Citibank, HSBC Bank, and the KPMG. This is the commercial, this is the commercial yeah, capital. Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, actually, I'm I live uh, just ten years away from the Thames River. Oh, lovely. Yes. When I used to live uh, 20 years back, um, uh, we used to live there uh, from 1999 till 2002. During that time, Canary Rope used to start building all the buildings. Yes. So yes. used to go there to see how they are constructing all the big buildings normally, which is not really common in London. Yeah, it's not common in London. It's, it's very nice. Uh, it's commercial area, actually. And, uh, it's commercial, quite, of yeah, course. And quite posh area as well. Um, I would say, and uh, thanks God, I got a place to live here. I don't know all of the things. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and uh, uh, we can uh, move ahead, question because I know it's quite late night for you guys, and uh, it's really Ashik Bhai was whole day it was a very hectic day for him, and yeah. thank you very much for him to give us the opportunity and come here as well. And we are just covering the relevant question. We're really sorry. However, if you have the further questions. Or if you want to, to take our contact details, you can ask, take the relevant question and uh, to our colleagues and now we'll be able to help you out. And it is not actually a uh, justification to take a relevant question throughout the, uh, in our session, which is actually not going according to our code of conduct today. Starting in the UK uh, is one of the, my dream, and uh, thank you, which, uh, which one is more reliable between IDP and British Council. Um, uh, I do not wanted to talk about IDP anything because British Council itself has been long term. Actually, uh, Bangladesh was a part of the British colony as well. And uh, our education system is based on the British education system. Our, uh, if you go for the uh, legal system, our legal system is completely based on the British legal system. If you go in financial sector, SSCA, everything is based on our legal, our, I mean, the British education system. In fact, if you have a degree from the UK, if you have a degree from other country, you can have a common understanding about the justification as well. So if you are planning to study A level, O level, GCC, is everything is a British education system. So if you are already in a British education system, if you wanted to move to another education system, 
you will have a difficulties. You definitely face difficulties with the new education system as well. British education system is a heritage. Is a heritage of hundreds of years of time. That is why Oxbridge, Oxford, Cambridge is still uh, ruining around the world. Coming to the vaccine is uh, coming from the UK. So we are and uh, is a great, I would say, a plan to study in the UK, having the British culture, they're taking the cross cultural like, experience. And uh, though the UK is a very small country compared to the America, well, I think there are 40 times small, uh, bigger America is compared to the UK. And uh, uh, not high number of students is going to America even. The uh, UK become the second uh, largest, uh, I mean, the uh, most popular country around the world for the international students. Around 600,000 students coming in the UK every year. And over 395 universities at the moment uh, promoting the education to the global uh, world and uh, ruining the, all the world and the industry students as well. So obviously, without any doubt, you will have a great cultural experience, great industrial experience. And uh, currently, the post-study work, this opportunity also open you new experience that you can take if you not wanted to actually a uh, long term planning to study or uh, to live here in the UK. But having this degree, you can if you plan to migrate to migrate to other country, you can also take the advantage as well. So coming to the UK, even the uh, way the visa system is much easier compared to the America, compared to Australia, compared to Canada as well. So you do not require to go for the submitting the six months bank statements, do not required to submit long term. Uh, I mean, the source of income, these and the A to Z need to have a need to have a high volume. No, you need to submit your bank statement for 28 days period along with your cast data and your documents. Simple is that. And uh, most of the cases I have seen in Bangladesh, uh, I'm just I must share with you uh, in the last January and September, around 20 to 30 percent students, our students did not face any interview from the UKBI. Go submit the documents, got a visa. So these sort of opportunities, I don't think that other countries are offering at the moment. So uh, we are happy. We are came to here, uh, bringing British Council is my actually. It is a great privilege for H and Z to have this such opportunity to become the part of the British Council and IELTS partner as well to promote IELTS, to promote British education system. We all love to work with you. Our service is completely free as well. And uh, while you will do the, all the registration, it will be also completely free for you as well. We are giving you the right direction towards your success as well. We have a few more questions before any finishing. Right. And, uh, I have completed my HCC. OK, if you complete your HCC, then we'll be able to help you out how we can guide you as well. Because the student come to understand, also we understand the English is better speaking. Uh, actually, you are completely right. We might be able to speak uh, English, Bangla as well, because of the our trend actually to guide you further today about IELTS, about so language, different language, all about. That is why we prefer to take uh, English as actually um, APA or Ashik Bhai, uh, uh, both actually uh, they are day to day work. I said, if you are Bangla, you are all Bangla, uh, Bangla, Bangla, uh, Bangla among, there should not be any problem. Uh, I, uh, well, actually, for me, it's quite difficult now. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if you are English or Bangla. So, what type of IELTS do I need to do? Okay, please do contact our colleague, I'll, they will be able to help you out. You wrote down in English, I'll, I have to respond in English as well. And the uh, question is, uh, is it chance to get a part-time? Yes. If you plan to study at the UK university, during the term time, you'll be eligible to work 20 hours. After the term time, your holiday time, vacation time, you'll also will be eligible to work full-time. If you have a course of placement, most of the courses, it will be one of the education is, uh, uh, it is a shilpo out in Bangla. Uh, theoretical Amrajeta Bangladesh Puri J. Portisi Portisi can to real life experience of Pachina. Our job sector available is experience nature on a job The age problem, it up a cane pavana, up a cane porven, and job corven. 
আপনি যে ইন্ডাস্ট্রিতে কাজ করেন সেই ইন্ডাস্ট্রির জন্য আপনার এক্সপিরিয়েন্স নেওয়ার জন্য সে অপরচুনিটি ইউকেতে পাবে যেটা ওয়ার্ল্ড অন্য অন্য কান্ট্রিতে ইট ইজ কোয়াইট ডিফিকাল্ট ফর ইউ কারণ আপনি যখন ব্যাচেলার কোর্সে আসবেন মোস্ট অফ দি কোর্সে ওয়ান ইয়ার থার্ড ইয়ার ইয়ার থ্রি প্লেসমেন্ট ইয়ার যে ইয়ারে আপনি এক বছর ফুল টাইম কাজ করার রাইট থাকবে আপনি মোস্ট অফ দি ইন্ডাস্ট্রি রানিং দিস আপনি মাস্টার্সে আসেন বিজনেস কোর্সে আসেন ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং আইটি সেক্টরে আসেন প্রত্যেকটা মোস্ট অফ দি ইউনিভার্সিটিতে আপনার প্লেসমেন্ট ইয়ার বা ইন্টার্নশিপ ইয়ার এক বছর আছে সেই ইয়ারে আপনি ফুল টাইম কাজ করতে পারবেন অ্যান্ড দ্যাটস কুড বি পেইড এজ অল সো ইউ ক্যান টেক দিস অ্যাডভান্টেজ অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম অ্যাগেন আপনি যখন পোস্ট স্টাডি ওয়ার্কে যাবেন দুই বছরের জন্য আলাদা বিচার সেখানে আপনি অ্যাডভান্টেজ নিতে পারবেন সো আই বিলিভ ইট ইস এ ফ্যান্টাস্টিক অপরচুনিটিস ফর লার্জ নাম্বার অফ ইন্টারন্যাশনাল স্টুডেন্ট স্পেশালি বাংলাদেশি স্টুডেন্ট আপনাদের জন্য এটা অপরচুনিটি ফর ইউ কোভিড নাইনটিনের কারণে ইউকে বিআই ভিজা ইস্যু মোস্ট মোর ফ্লেক্সিবল মোর রিল্যাক্স কোভিড এর পরে ব্রেকজিটের জন্য রিল্যাক্স আপনারা এই অ্যাডভান্টেজগুলো নিতে পারেন যেহেতু আওয়ার ভিজা সাকসেস রেট আওভার অ্যারাউন্ড আই থিঙ্ক অ্যারাউন্ড নাইনটি নাইন পার্সেন্ট অ্যাট দ্য মোমেন্ট ইভেন ফ্রম বাংলাদেশ আপনারা ওই অ্যাডভান্টেজগুলো নিতে পারেন যা ইনশাল্লাহ আপনাদের ভিজা কখনোই রিফিউজ হওয়ার কোনো চান্স থাকবে না আমরা আপনাদেরকে ওই ক্ষেত্রে ওয়ান টু ওয়ান সেশন কাউন্সিলিং করবো এই ক্ষেত্রে ইনশাল্লাহ উই লাভ টু সি অল অফ ইউ আমরা উই হ্যাভ থ্রি মোর কোয়েশন আই উইল ইন্ডিয়া ফার্স্ট সেশন যে I do not uh, understand one thing that uh, without UQBIE, uh, IELTS cannot, uh, can't reapply for any uh, UQ. After you do not require to, uh, Shishir, you are not required to have the uh, UQBI ILTS. Without UQBI ILTS, you can apply for university application. If you have your ILTS directly B2 level anti-recurrence meet. So, we have already, uh, already answered the question. J uh, it is not required. I think uh, this question came from the different country and uh, I have seen her profile before actually before coming to the session and uh, she's uh, from Nepal. She's That's joined. a good UK comment. UK is better, is better than the US, US also because people are civilized in the UK. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, yes. I, 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 I must say you might have the UK experience and we'd love to welcome you in the UK for the coming intake. Uh, which program is best for MSc MBA? Uh, if I do MSc in accounting, can I go again MBA? Also, I do past uh, MBA. If you, uh, it actually, uh, yes, you are both. Uh, if you do the MSc, you can do another MBA. If you do the MBA, you can do MSc. But regardless, if you want to do and the master degree to another master degree, you have to have a clear career aspiration in your personal statement, why you require to do and the master degree. And obviously, we'll be able to guide you further on this matter. Please do contact our colleagues and they will be able to help you further. Do you, uh, dear viewers, we have been uh, one hour, 27 minutes, uh, which is the longest, I would say, the session I have uh, been running uh, this evening. And thank you very much, all of you joining. And Apa and Ashik Bhai, before you leaving, large number of viewers, uh, in an average, there are 92 people. কনস্ট্যান্টলি আমাদের কি বিয়ে করতেছে আপনার কি আপনাদের দর্শকদের উদ্দেশ্যে কিছু বলবেন আশিক ভাই আপনি শুরু করেন আমি শেষ করব তারপরে थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बियरिंग विथ अस फॉर सच अ लॉन्ग टाइम एंड आई थिंक द सेशन हैज बीन वेरी इनफॉरमेटिव आई आल्सो गॉट टू लर्न अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स फ्रॉम फ्रॉम द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव साइड आई डोंट नो मच अबाउट दैट माय फोकस इज द टेस्ट द असेसमेंट I, ex- I was expecting more questions, more minute and subtle uh, questions from inside every module. However, um, maybe they don't have those questions. Anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed the session. I am grateful to both British Council and AKJ, AHJ for inviting me here. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, A, H, and Z, we have a lot of work in student counseling, student placement, and we have a lot of work in this organization. We have a lot of work in this organization. 
যে তাদের সাথে আমরা নতুন আমাদের রিলেশনশিপটা শুরু হয়েছে এর আগে আমরা অন্য ডিপার্টমেন্ট থেকে কাজ করতাম কিন্তু আইএলসি একসাথে কাজ করা হয় নাই এখন থেকে আমরা আইএলস এর জন্য একসাথে কাজ করব ইনশাআল্লাহ আর আপনাদের সিলেটে অফিস আছে চিটাগং অফিস আছে আমাদেরও অফিসগুলো আছে সো স্টুডেন্টদের যদি কোনো ধরনের কোনো কোশ্চেন কোয়েরি থাকে তাহলে আপনাদের থ্রু দিয়ে আমাদের কাছে আসতে পারে আর রিকোয়েস্ট করব আপনারা একটু কয়েকদিন ধৈর্য ধরেন আমরা আবার হেলথ এন্ড সেফটি মেনে নিয়ে সরকারি নির্দেশনা মেনে নিয়ে আপনাদের কাছে আইএলস নিয়ে আসবো আবার খুব তাড়াতাড়ি অনেক ধন্যবাদ জি আর অনেকগুলো কোশ্চেন আমরা আজকে অ্যানসার করেছি অনেকগুলো যেহেতু আমাদের পেজটা শুধু আমরা যেহেতু ইউকে প্রমোট করি আপনাদের অনেক কোশ্চেন আসছে যেগুলো আমরা এখানে দিতে পারি না উই আর রিলি সরি বাট একটা কোশ্চেন উত্তর দিয়ে যেতে চাচ্ছি আপনি বাংলায় লিখছেন বাংলা উত্তর দিয়ে দিব হ্যাঁ যে আপনি দশ বছরের মাধ্যমে দেশে সেটল হওয়ার আরেকটা স্কিম আছে যেটা আপনি যা বলছেন যে দশ বছরের মধ্যে আপনি দেশে আসতে পারবেন কি না কোনো অসুবিধা আপনি দেশে আসতে পারবেন আপনি অ্যারাউন্ড নাইনটি ডেজ আমি অ্যারাউন্ড নাইনটি ডেজ পিরিয়ড বলি আমরা যে ইন ইয়ার আপনি দেশের বাইরে থাকতে পারবেন কোনো অসুবিধা নেই সো আপনি যদি টোটাল লং টাইম ইনি টুয়েলভ মান্থসের মধ্যে আপনি নাইনটি ডেজ বাইরে থাকেন তিন মাস ওইটা আপনার লং রেসেন্সে ইয়ে করবে না However, for more details, I'm not actually immigration advisor or I have no right to give any uh, individual about the immigration advice as well. You need to uh, go through the website and can find out with more details from the UKBI website and you can get this thing, uh, more details. And thank you very much, viewers. Uh, it was a fantastic opportunity for all of us and uh, to cover this session. And I feel honored and... Uh, I, uh, um, that the uh, British Council and IELTS came to our on board and they want to support the international students, especially for the UK universities. And together, inshallah, we'll go far, we'll support all of our students. Thank you very much. And hope for the best. We'd love to see you in the UK very soon. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>